Today we're gonna to talk about the earnest money deposit. I get a lot of questions about earnest money deposit. We often call it EMD for short. What that is, how to manage that. One of the biggest challenges when you first get started investing in real estate is having cash for your earnest money deposit. So let's talk a little bit about that. I wanna share a few tips on how to protect your earnest money deposit and a few ways to um, make your money stretch if you've got to worry about earnest money deposit, if that's a concern of yours. So first of all, what is the earnest money deposit? When you're looking for a deal, let's say you're the buyer at this point and you're looking for a deal, oftentimes a seller will require that you put a deposit down on your offer as, as a contingency to accept your offer. That deposit then is applied toward the, towards the purchase uh, once you get the closing, it's applied and, and it's subtracted from whatever your purchase price is. So you sign a contract to buy a property, seller wants an earnest money deposit. Well, these can range from 500 bucks up to a thousand bucks typically. And a lot of people say, I don't have the cash to pay my earnest money deposit. I've got investment money, or maybe you're in one of my finder programs where I'm buying the deal and you don't need to worry about the purchase money but oftentimes you still have this earnest money deposit to worry about. Okay, so first thing, first tip when it comes to earnest money, never write the earnest money check directly to the seller. Okay, you do not want that going to the seller or the seller's entity. You want that to be held in an escrow account that's safe and protected, just in case for whatever reason your deal doesn't work, work out or you exercise your inspection contingency and you need to get that back you want to be able to do that. If you've got to go to the seller and get it back, you may have a problem, right? So who could hold that? Uh, a real estate agent could hold that, the title or escrow or closing attorney. Somebody other than the seller can hold that. Typically it's the title, escrow, or attorney, attorney's office that will hold that, or the listing agent. Um, real estate agents have very strict rules with how they hold those earnest money deposits. It's in a special account, so it's safe there, okay? So that's the first thing. Um, Second thing is when you're making your offers, a lot of people think that they have to actually write earnest money checks when they make their offer. In fact, a lot of real estate agents will say, I'm gonna submit your offer, but I need you to give me the earnest money check to submit with your offer. And that's not how that works. You should never give your earnest money deposit when you're making an offer. You only give the earnest money deposit once you have an accepted offer from the seller then you give the earnest money deposit. So what I like to do is show the seller that I've got my earnest money deposit. So what I do is I take a photocopy of the check and then I, I provide that with my offer. So you have got my offer, you know, the back page of the offer has a copy of whatever it is, $500, whatever, $1,000. It's a copy of a check, not the real check. Why do I do that? Because I still want the seller to see, look, I'm serious, here's my offer. Oftentimes I'll have proof of funds if I'm making cash offers, and here's a copy of my earnest money deposit check. Okay, but again, that's just a photocopy, it's not the actual check. Only give the earnest money once you have an accepted offer. Finally, the last thing I wanna talk about is how to manage not having uh, funds for making your offers, the earnest money funds. Um, first of all, if you're making the offer, you know, you can go low, sometimes 200 bucks, 250 bucks. Sometimes you can get away with 500 bucks. If you're making the offer, you know, start low for one. Uh, if the seller comes back and says, I want a higher earnest money deposit, you know, then you can deal with it then. But don't go in necessarily with $1,000 just because you don't have to, right? It, it, no one says what the earnest money has to be. So you can start out low. Another thing that I do is I say, I'll provide the earnest money deposit at the end of my inspection. So I write that in my, my offer. I say earnest money deposit will be provided at the end of my seven or 10 day inspection. Now, what did I just do? I basically have an accepted offer. I have a 10 day window to pay my earnest money deposit. During those 10 days is when I like to wholesale my deal. So here's what happens in most cases. I put in my contract, earnest money deposit will be provided at completion of 10 day inspection. Right, so now I've got 10 days accepted offer. During the 10 days is when I go to my cash buyers and I say, I've got this deal, I work out my deal. Usually within 10 days, I can get my cash buyer on the line now to flip my deal to. What do I do then? Is I get my cash buyer to pay the earnest money deposit to me, because he's gotta pay me an earnest money deposit in the same amount that I agreed to on my contract. 
So if I have $500 as my earnest money deposit, I get $500 from my cash buyer. Basically what I just did is I got my cash buyer to fund my earnest money deposit that I owe the seller. See how that works? I did that by giving myself a 10 day window. Now, of course, the seller has to agree that you can pay your earnest money deposit at the end of your 10 days. But that's, that's how you can do that. So that's another way that you can manage um, not having funds for earnest money deposit if you're just getting started and that's a concern of yours. Okay, remember, protect your earnest money deposit. Um, never pay it directly to the seller and look at spreading out your inspection, paying it at the end of your inspection as a way to manage your earnest money deposits. All right, Jerry Norton signing off.